Okay, so I got a 955 box covering some 955s. Before I open the, or lift the box off and look inside and see what we got, um, this isn't, I'm not going to get into like performance stuff, like how many watts it puts out. That's, that's not what this is about. I want, I want to go over the design, the architecture, um, what I know, what I don't know. Um, and you know, that sort of thing, the things that I think are good, uh, about it, that sort of stuff. And I'm going to keep it brief because there's going to have to be a lot of videos about this. Um, it, there's way too much to cover. Um, it would take hours and hours and hours to cover everything. Um, and I just want to try to keep this down in, a, in some sort of reasonable, watchable time. So with that said, um, radio, uh, as far as like power output in comparison, it, it meets and exceeds the specifications. No problem. Uh, even FCC, you know, spectral purity, it meets and exceeds. It, it's it's fine. So there you have it. There's version two, version one, and version one's tried and true. Um, it's a robust platform, but you know the the whole issue with this really is. Um, Parts, they're getting harder to find. A lot of the parts this was originally designed with, they're they're obsolete. Um, they're they haven't been made for years. Um, you know, uh, var actors, for instance, I know are unobtainium that were designed in to use for the filters on this. Unobtainium, the PLL unobtainium, or pretty close to it. Uh, microcontroller is you know like over a decade old. Um, you know, this is a essentially over a decade old design. You know, I got a board here that's, you know, over 10 years old. And you can see the design changes from 10 years ago to now. Um, you know, they've kept it going. Um, eventually it was going to happen. But they were going to have to go back to the board and they were going to have to do it again. And that's fine because I think this is a, a, a great step forward. Uh, there's a lot of things I like about this. So with that said, these aren't going anywhere. Lots of people have them. There are tons of them out there. They're not going anywhere. We just have to, uh, you know, keep enjoying them. So I have my other one here, and this is the one that I poke and prod. I've got the heat sink off of it, so you can see the whole board on this one. So um, input power protection is a lot better on this. They've added a feature to this that I don't think is present in any other radio of this class, and that's over voltage protection. And I mean actual real over voltage protection. I don't mean saying on the display, hey, you know, you're feeding too much voltage. Um, if you exceed like 21 and a half volts, it blows a fuse. Um, if you bring the voltage back down and you replace the fuse, the radio works like nothing happened. So it's not a irreversible thing. Whereas on the older version one radio you overvolt it you start blowing capacitors up and you, it, it, you're going to cause havoc but on these no this also has superior reverse polarity protection notice the absence of a diode it's because it doesn't need one um if you think that you need to put a diode in here because they've omitted it think again they've actually done something better and they used a p-channel mosfet you don't need a diode um, so don't think that you're helping it because if you actually put a diode in these, you'd be downgrading the radio. Um, you just don't need to do it. So there's several different ways you can do over, uh, uh, reverse polarity. You can have a diode across the input that's, you know, uh, so that if you reverse the polarity, obviously it conducts through the diode and blows the fuse. That's been used for forever. You know, that's what this is. You're just, you know, when you reverse the polarity, you're forward biasing that diode and then pull the low fuse. Then there is something that Uniden started doing in some of their radios, which is a bunch of Schottky diodes in an array, in a parallel. So they have these Schottky diodes in parallel. The problem with that is one conducts more than the other, gets hotter than the others. It's sort of unbalanced. It works, 
It's not the best idea. Um, you know, and in that case, if you reverse the polarity, the radio would have been dead. It wouldn't blow the fuse or anything like that. It just wouldn't work. On this radio, um, you have the added benefit of reversing the polarity. It won't turn on. It won't blow the fuse. It won't work. But you also have very little loss through this P-channel diode of uh, uh, MOSFET. So if you're running the radio, you know, correctly, polarity is correct, obviously uh, your voltage current flows through the MOSFET with very little loss. The RDS on on this MOSFET is quite low. So, you know, if it's turned on, uh, it's it's almost like it's not there, basically. Uh, but if you reverse polarity, it can't flow backwards through it. So, you know, it's a better way of doing business because you're not generating any heat and you're not having any loss like you would through with a like a bunch of shocky diodes in an array. Good idea if you don't have a whole lot of current. But this radio is going to be in excess of 10 amps, so you need a lot of current. And so you could pass tens of amps through this uh, little dinky MOSFET, as people will probably revert to it as, and it just doesn't matter because the resistance on it is so low that it's like it's not there. So that said, what else do I know? Um, the covers on this radio, they have vents. So you have convection cooling. It's the bottom plate. It's got a vent. The top plate has another vent. So we can exhaust out the top. So goes in the back, goes over the board, goes out and out the top. So we have airflow through the radio now and this heat sink. So things are going to stay cooler inside of the radio. And that's a good thing. Um, the other thing about it is, and I'm sure that everybody's noticed, there's nothing to turn. Everything on this radio has gone digital. Even the audio comes in from the mic jack, goes through this cable here, this harness, hits an op amp, and it goes right into this black box. Don't know what this is. They've lasered the number off, so it is truly a black box. Audio goes in, it's manipulated, it comes out. Uh, and what I mean by manipulated, it's run through equalizer or filters or whatever you pick in the menu because you can change the you know the the audio bandwidth of the radio all that is manipulated digitally and then it's spat out your echo might gain all of it it's handled in here and with no part number we have no idea what this is i have ideas but i i can't confirm that um i need more information so um you know, this is unfortunately, um, as it stands right now, unfortunately, the only information that I'm probably going to get from this, unless they tell me what it is, which I can tell you they're not going to do that, is probably nitric acid. <laughs> and that wouldn't be the first time that I've decapped something to figure out what it is. Um, and that might be, unfortunately, in this radio's future is some nitric acid. Um, so that said... Um, a heat generating source was removed from the side in the audio amp. Um, so it will be cooler just because of that and the heat sink and the convection cooling. That's a positive change. Um, microcontroller data sheets are available for this, even in English. Um, so I know, I know everything there is to know about this microcontroller. It's just an uh, ARM M0 that uh, can run at 48 megahertz. Um, so that's, you know, that's fine. We know what this is, but they had no, would no, have no reason to obscure that. Um, this little board over here with the castellated edges, it's a module. There's a, um, audio, um, codec on this board and I'm not entirely sure why. And this other little chip is a mystery. I don't know what that's for either. Um, I know that they're handling some audio here. Something is being done there. But I'm not really too sure about this other thing. Uh, more information. Uh, I'm going to have to sniff the, you know, poke around on it and see what's going on. 
This, that's normally in a shield, is a, I think this is a RDA clone, one chip wonder IC, that's used in radios like the Baofeng. It's very, very similar, but it has a custom part number. So you have your Baofengs like this, and they have basically a one chip transceiver uh, for receive and transmit. And, um, you know, they generate, uh, you basically run, you know, antennas, antenna switches into it to have, I think it's a receive antenna, transmit antenna, or maybe it does the switching internally. I can't recall. But a uh, company, RDA, made them, and um, they got bought out by somebody else. Um, and there's clones of them out there now. And they use this to generate 10.7 megahertz. And then they wash it through a filter. So that seems fine. I think the same chip is in here. I haven't pulled the shields off, so I'm not positive, but I'm reasonably sure it's the same based on the data that's on the bus um, when you change things, because it's either going to change the frequency this is generating or changing the frequency that the first allow is it needs. So you're either commanding this one or you're commanding this one. The, the commands look identical with the exception of you know, obviously the payload, you know, probably, um, uh, you know, the command to tell it will change or create this particular frequency. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's what's in here. I haven't pulled this up yet, you know, to confirm it. But this has a custom part number. Um, incidentally, the scheme, the part number on this chip is the same as the one that is above here that isn't lasered off. So I'm pretty sure that that's a custom number. Um, and the, the one number that isn't lasered off of this is a custom number that begins with QA. They both begin with QA and have the same number of digits. So I think that's just a, a house part number. Um, typical receiver, capacitively coupled stages, no more transformers, no more things to tune, no more things to tweak. It is all controlled by um, digital to analog converters mainly this guy right here. So this controls bandpass filters for the receiver and um, RF power and bias. So your bias, your RF power, and your receiver um, self-alignment is all done in software. And of course, commanded by the microcontroller. The only thing in this radio that is basically implemented in hardware is the AGC. That's it. That is the only thing that is that is done in hardware. Everything else is controlled in software. The AGC is strictly a hardware AGC. So, you know, your uh, receive chain is, you know, there's your low, low noise amplifier, a tunable bandpass that is controlled in software, mixer, Bandpass, uh, more amplification, um, you know, and we can, there's some pin diodes in here. So we uh, either go um, through the, um, uh, through this big um, monolithic, monolithic crystal filter, or we go through, you know, another IF stage where we wash it through. Uh, 455 kilohertz of you know amplifier and then we end up in this strip here and this is where the AGC is taken off it goes up to this op amp this op amp you know does its business and controls the AGC on the receiver that's literally it and the AGC on this is um, something I would advocate that you don't manipulate um, people have started manipulating the AGC on these, and all they do is blow up the receiver. Um, you know, it's the uh, so-called infamous Q50 mod. Um, it not only does it cause additional distortion in the receiver because it's being overdriven, but it actually causes the LNA to fail when it encounters a strong signal because the time constant of the AGC has been affected. Um, it, I don't know who came up with it. I know that I've actually had to repair several radios that had Q, uh, that had R50 replaced. Incidentally, um, 
believe it or not, this radio is one of those radios that has a R50 replaced and the number scratched off of it. And yeah, it needs to be fixed uh, because it has a bad Q1. <laughs> so I just need to fix it. Um, that said, uh, that's basically all I know at this time about this radio. Um, so all I can really say is be careful about what you poke around in here. Because if you have probes that are too big, you know, like that, uh, if you make one slip in here, you're going to kiss it goodbye. I mean, you know, you know like needle spring loaded uh, kind of probes to probe all this 0402 stuff. If you slip in the wrong place with this 3.3 volt logic in here that's all over the place and you shunt that 8 volts into it because there's 8 volts all over the place, you're going to say goodbye to this microcontroller, this, you know, DAC, this, you know, uh, black box over here, any of these things. You're just going to destroy them. And if you do that to like a data bus, you could destroy all of them at once. So all I can say is be careful. Uh, this isn't something that you really want to start tinkering with unless you're very, very comfortable and blowing up radios. And I hope that everybody enjoys it. I'll definitely do more videos about this in the future. Uh, there's a lot to reverse engineer. But for now, uh, that's my uh, first overview start getting into data buses and decoding stuff and trying to figure out what stuff is doing um, in future videos. So cheers. Catch you next time.